Welcome Americas and all of our friends around the globe. It is so exciting to be here at Puppetize Digital 2020. My name's Yvonne Wassenaar, I'm CEO of Puppet, and we are here today at the fabulous Fairmont in San Francisco. This is a hotel steeped in history. In 1945, the inaugural United Nations met here. In 1961, Tony Bennett released one of my favorite songs, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. And in 2013, yes, you got it, Puppet Comp, right here in the Fairmont. And it was amazing to have all of you here in person, connecting, sharing stories. And while we can't do that this year, I do hope that you're safe and, and, and doing well in your homes, perhaps in your exotic Airbnb, wherever you are. And I wanna start with a thank you. Thank you for spending the time with us today and thank you for all that you've done over the years. You've helped us extend automation around the globe. You've helped us deepen our product portfolio. And most importantly, you've delivered tremendous value for your organizations. We've worked hard to pull together a series of sessions and workshops to allow you to share those learnings uh, and see the latest and greatest of what Puppet's bringing to market. And joining me today, the one and only Deepak, a longtime puppeteer who's now leading our cloud native work. He's gonna take you on a flying tour of that in a little bit. And Abby, a more recent addition to our team, Abby started on our product advisory board and a little over six months ago joined to run all of R&D, including our own tech stack um, move to cloud, cloud native. And she's gonna talk about that a bit as well. But let's get started with one of my favorite things, some customer stories. Geico. Geico is the second largest auto insurer in the US. They have been leveraging puppet technology for over half a decade and their success is undeniable. They manage over 12,000 nodes, and over half of them are in Microsoft Azure. They are an excellent example of what it takes to modernize the tech stack. And those are some great learnings for all of you coming out of not just the Geico story, but so many others who've leveraged Puppet for their move into the cloud. KPN, a leading telecommunications and IT provider in the Netherlands. As Andreas calls out, KPN understood early on that infrastructure as code was critical to enable innovation faster. And at KPN, they're doing some really interesting work, integrating Puppet with Splunk, with GitHub. They've got 10,000 servers, 7,500 nodes, 250 Puppet modules, 33 Puppet masters. They've created an incredible environment to collect more data, to create standardized builds, and improve compliance. Just again, another amazing story to learn from and to extend into your own environments. And Uber, we started engaging with Uber after the public beta of Relay. Stan's problem was similar to many of yours. The environment was becoming more complex. There was new architectures that were being introduced. And what Stan loved about Relay is it allowed them to build smarter workflows, to solve real world problems in a modern, elegant, and efficient way. And I'm so excited about Relay, and I hope you are too, because what Stan experienced is just the starting point of what will be possible. But these are just a few of the stories. Thanks to all of you, Puppet Technology is now in over 80% of the Global 5000 with great representation in America's APAC, EMEA. You have all gone from eliminating soul crushing work to driving digital innovation safely and at scale. You've done that through automating your compliance, using Puppet to patch vulnerabilities, um, to scale self-service, and most importantly, to accelerate your DevOps initiatives. And I wanna say thank you. Thank you for pushing us and for what you've helped us build to help you. But I don't just want to talk about the successes that we've had. There'll be a lot of sessions on that. I also want to talk about the future because these are unique times for us to come together, compare notes and figure out not just how did we get to where we are, but how do we go to where we need to be? What is going to be next? And what is the leadership role we can collectively play in that? So with that, it is undeniable that digitization is the future. Twilio did a survey and it found that even the laggards have been pushed in to digitization by the pandemic, because if you don't digitize, you're gonna die. 
What they found when they surveyed these 2,500 executives is that 97% of them said COVID sped up the digital transformation. And in an environment where a lot of people are cutting budgets, 79% said that their budgets are actually increasing for digitization initiatives. But what does that really mean for all of us? How do we think about this digitization from an infrastructure and operations perspective? How do we think about it from a puppet perspective? Well, three things stand out. The first is cloud. It's clear that cloud is gonna play a bigger role for all of us. And it's not just moving everything into the public cloud. It's much public cloud. It's much more complex than that. Compliance and security. Well, as everything digitizes, the bad actors aren't sleeping. They're noticing that and we need to do more to keep them out and keep our organizations and all of you safe. And scale. Scale is something we've been doing for a long time together. But now we need to think about scale in a different way across more complex environments and with more people. Because these things are so important, I want to dig into them a little bit more with a specific focus of infrastructure automation and how we partner together to do more. So automating the move to the cloud. Well, you know, data suggests that 75% of enterprises will have, you know, a hybrid environment by next year. And quite frankly, I'm surprised the number isn't higher because I know all of you have already started, if you don't already have, much of your workloads in the public cloud. But it's not a move everything there. It's a much more sophisticated approach to thinking about what belongs in the data center, what belongs in a public cloud, and how do you effectively move it around. And it's undeniable that this integration of these different environments is increasing the need for infrastructure automation. It's going from a nice to have to a must have. And it's because you need infrastructure automation to free up the resources to allow you to have the bandwidth to do this incremental work. You need infrastructure automation to give you reliable, consistent ways to view across all these environments. And by doing these moves with infrastructure automation, you can reduce your risks because if you need to, you can roll back. And once you've moved workloads a certain place, you can move them around based on your business needs. And so it's exciting to see how so many of you are using Puppet in this move to the cloud, be it to move the workloads with PE into Azure or Google or AWS, or perhaps you're using Bolt to configure your Kubernetes clusters. Or maybe you're one of the folks who've already tried Relay and you found this cool EC2 Reaper as a way to control your AWS costs. Whatever it is, it's important to be thinking about how do you do this in the most efficient and scalable way. But we all know, it's not just about where the workloads sit. There's, a, there's gonna be a need to manage VMs and operating systems for a long time to come. But with the rise of cloud native, there's a fundamental shift to immutable infrastructure that requires us to think differently. Applications are increasingly dependent on APIs and services to, to run properly and reliably. And these APIs, they're all configured different and it's not easy to connect them. Compounding the problem is that many of these APIs are listening for signals or they're triggering other APIs. It gets really complex really quickly. Now, this is exactly the type of problem that folks like Deepak love. It's a very puppety problem because that's exactly the problem that we had with VMs and operating systems back in the day. And Puppet allowed you to abstract away that complexity and drive the scale and efficiency that you needed. And that's what we're doing in this new world. We're extending this foundation of infrastructure as code into what we like to call workflow as code or event-based automation. And that's allowing us to, to abstract away the complexity and let you get the work done that you need to do. Deepak's gonna demo more of that in a little bit. Compliance and security. You know, I touched on this a bit and, and quite frankly, you've all been using Puppet for compliance for a long time. Many of you chose to go from Puppet Open Source to Puppet Enterprise to ease your compliance burden. One of the customers I was talking to said his compliance audits went from weeks down to days. That alone justified the move to Puppet Enterprise. And, and, and for many of you, from a security standpoint, you use Puppet to do your patch management. Um, and increasingly, many of you are taking advantage of Remediate, which is our offering that helps you reduce the time to vulnerability remediation. But it's not enough. 
the bad actors are, are, are extending what they're doing. And, and just recently, we had a coordinated ransomware attack in the US where multiple hospitals fell prey and it could have impacted people's lives. In fact, Checkpoint identified a 50% increase in the number of ransomware attacks just in the last three months. We looked to Gartner and Gartner has fundamentally said 60% of regulated verticals will have compliance as code in their DevOps tool chain by 2023. Our own research supports it as well. If you look at the state of the DevOps report last year, we talked about how security integrated into the DevOps chain. And that's exactly what Puppet's doing through improving the integration of Remediate into PE and through coming out with new offerings that help you do things like Puppet Comply that Abby's going to talk about in a bit. Scale. Scale is something that we've been doing together for a long time. And we're not just talking about hundreds of, of, of servers or tens of thousands. We're talking, for many of you, hundreds of thousands of servers under management with Puppet. And we've extended our product portfolio to support you in that scale out with great offerings like CD for PE, where you get impact analysis and you can do the CI CD pipeline from within Puppet. But going forward, scale is going to be more than just the size of your environment. It's going to be managing the complexity as we've talked about, but also letting more people in. With, with compliance as code and more remote workers and, and app developers needing to scale out and have more self-service, um, it's undeniable that we need to think differently about our infrastructure automation environments. In fact, some research shows that 90% of companies that fail to deliver on self-service will fail to deliver on scale. So what is that gonna take? What is that gonna mean? Well, we've been listening to you and what we understand is really it requires that we think about being more simple and easy, being more accessible across different environments and integrating that all together in powerful ways. And it's because of that that I am so excited to share with you today what I think is the, the, the biggest announcement we're gonna make at Puppet, the Puppet Enterprise Platform. We started off figuring out how to eliminate soul crushing work, and that was great. But now that's not enough. We have to help you figure out how are you going to digitally innovate safely and at scale? How are you going to create infrastructure that's actionable, intelligent, scalable? How are you going to do that? How can we help you do that? And that is what sits behind the Puppet Enterprise platform. It's not a product per se, it's actually an integration of our portfolio that allows you to take everything that you love around Puppet Enterprise and extend it and do more with it. And we're doing that through better integrating Remediate and our Bolt engine into Puppet Enterprise and better integrating Relay, our event-driven automation engine, into Puppet Enterprise and pulling it together in powerful ways. Let me dig into this a bit. So as I was just talking about, the engine itself, the automation engine, is really this ability to have task-based, model-driven, event-driven automation. Whatever automation you need, where you need it, we're integrating it together. But we all know an engine is only as powerful as what you put in it. And thanks to all of you, we have amazing content, amazing automation modules that continue to grow and scale. And we've revamped the Forge to make it easier for you to find and use them. But it's not just the automation content, it's also the partner integrations. The interoperability in your environment is increasingly critical. And you've helped us build out great integrations with companies like ServiceNow and Splunk and so many others. And as we've talked about, the ability to run all of this across a wide variety of environments be that in the data center, the public cloud, out to the edge, wherever you need it. But trust me, I know this is yet not enough. You have told us loud and clear you want solutions to your problems. You want us to be focused, prescriptive, and give you answers to your needs. And we're doing that as well. We've got both Puppet Remediate and what will soon come out, Puppet Comply, to sit on top of that pl platform and deliver against these specific outcomes. And this is just the beginning. Much, much more is to come. But we wouldn't be here without you. So wrapped around all of this will be our continued investment in you and in our community in growing and scaling this together. 
This, my friends, is the Puppet Enterprise platform. It is how we are gonna to continue to integrate, scale out, and make our portfolio all the more powerful, all the more extensible for you, to help you be more successful as you drive forward the digitization initiatives in your world. And it doesn't stop there. Services. So many of you are deep, deep experts in Puppet, and we love that. That's how you've been able to push us to where we are. But some of you have said enough is enough. You don't want to have to be a deep, dark expert. You don't want to have to train people up so much to be able to get the value. And so we've not only made the solution simpler, but we've built out and matured our services. We've offered remote services since before the pandemic. We're now offering solution specific services to help you drive even faster. We've innovated our technical account manager program, our TAM program, based on input from all of you. And we've introduced residents. So we'll continue to, to match and mature our services to enable you to accelerate your journey when and how you need. You know, there's so much pressure in the world around us today, and it is frustrating. I'm sure it's as frustrating for you as it is for me to be the infrastructure operations person who always gets thrown under the bus. And it doesn't have to be that way. With the right technology, with technology that abstracts away the complexity, that invites others in, that allows us to solve specific business problems quickly, effectively, and at scale, we can go from being bottlenecks to being catalysts. We can not only support what the business needs to do, but we can drive it forward. And that is why I'm so excited to be here today to have shared with you our, our move towards the Puppet Enterprise platform and all these amazing advancements that we're making with you and for you. And to that end, what we're gonna be sharing through the rest of the keynote and all of these sessions are great ways that we've made Puppet simpler and easier, more extensible, to allow you to listen to signals in your environment and respond to them with intelligent workflows, to migrate to the cloud more quickly and move things around if you need, to scale out, to invite people in, to deliver outcomes. So with that, it is my great pleasure to turn over to Abby and Deepak so they can show you not just tell you, but show you how amazing the technology is that we're building together. Abby, come join me. Thanks, Yvonne. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be with you all here today. This is my very first Puppetize. I officially joined Puppet seven months ago, but have been a longtime fan of Puppet, including a long stint on the product advisory board prior to joining. I've been in tech for nearly 21 years and all of it in the enterprise infrastructure space, my favorite area. The last five years in enterprise infrastructure have truly been exciting as broad sweeping changes are happening across the board. Prior to joining Puppet, I was the CEO of Cloud Foundry Foundation and had the opportunity to delve even deeper into enterprise infrastructure as it shifted to cloud native architectures. Given the direction of where technology is going, I saw a fantastic opportunity to work at Puppet and what Puppet was doing. And I was thrilled to be able to join a rocket ship of a company as it was shifting into a new era of automation. I joined just as the realities of COVID-19 were taking hold around the world and the acceleration of automation initiatives in the enterprise continues to surprise me. Deepak and I are gonna spend the next half hour sharing quite a few exciting product development with you. But before we do that, I would like to share what I've heard from people like you, our customers and our users. After seven months of meeting with customers and enterprise executives around the world, I believe that enterprises today have a few core challenges. The first of those frequently cited challenges that I've heard from customers was that as they pushed to automate more at greater scale, they also needed to expand their automation across a variety of teams across their organization. This is especially true as they adopt and scale more DevOps practices requiring application and operation teams to do more with infrastructure faster. But 
Most of these teams don't want to have to build that automation. They just need to use it. And that's where self-service comes in and the ability to leverage shared platforms to drive consistent automation across the entire organization. Another core challenge I hear, especially from those of you in highly regulated industries, is managing compliance requirements. Many of you are managing complex compliance and security requirements across a complicated and quickly changing technology landscape, which is expanding to include more workloads in public clouds. Later, we will be showing you our latest investments in compliance automation and why treating compliance as code is key for enterprises that need to drive a move to the cloud and ensure security and compliance along the way. Finally, the biggest thing I hear from customers is that you all have aggressive goals to move to the cloud as quickly as possible. As Yvonne mentioned earlier, Gartner estimates that 75% of large enterprises will adopt a hybrid or multi-cloud strategy by next year. My guess, if we were all in a ballroom together somewhere, and I ask you all to raise your hand if your company had a hybrid cloud environment and you hadn't stayed out late and had your coffee, I'd see nearly all of your hands go up. And if I then ask you to keep your hands up if you're using more than one public cloud, I'd bet that many of your hands would remain up. For those of you with your hands up, you're gonna hear from Deepak shortly about how multiple styles of automation are necessary across cloud native, on-prem, and hybrid environments. Because as most of you are aware, these environments are too complex to manage at scale. In strong DevOps practices, self-service is a key component. You want to be able to enable more teams, the ability to access and build automation. But you also need to make it easy for more teams to access and share what they've built. Today, Puppet offers two simple yet powerful tools that have a lot in common. Bolt, our open source infrastructure task automation tool, and Relay, an event-driven workflow automation product. Both are agentless. Both can use YAML to quickly and easily enable orchestration without any programming skills. Both can be used for traditional cloud-native architectures. Both are widely used by DevOps teams. And both are simple enough to download and start automating things in minutes. But they each excel at automating different and complementary things. Relay was born to solve the complexities of the explosion of a broad number of tools technologies, and API events created in cloud-native environments. Relay is great at automating workflows that orchestrate people, process, and tools surrounding infrastructure. Bolt is first and foremost an infrastructure task automation and orchestration tool. Bolt can use YAML, but it can tackle tougher use cases with Puppet code. It can even remotely execute scripts and code in any language from Bash to Python to Ruby. Bolt is a fantastic complement to Relay. In fact, Bolt is one of the first integrations we built for Relay. So Relay workflows can include infrastructure tasks that take advantage of the vast library of Bolt modules from Puppet, as well as our community on Forge. Just last month, we added a project's capability to Bolt, which brings together a collection of tasks and inventory. But where automation projects really shine is through a self-service interface. Today, I am thrilled to announce a new product that offers self-service across your teams, Puppet Connect. Arriving in early 2021, Puppet Connect builds on Bolt capabilities and extends those capabilities across your organization. Puppet Connect is based on Bolt Engine, which means it comes out of the box ready to run task-based content available today from Forge. Puppet Connect enables your teams to codify and scale their unique expertise as automation projects. 
Then as a self-service user, I can log into my team's workspace and run the automation I need to do my job. Whether that's resolving an incident, remediating a vulnerability, or bringing new application functionality to the market. To show you more about Puppet Connect and what it can do, I am so pleased to introduce Carl Com, the product manager for Puppet Connect. Take it away, Carl. Thanks, Abby. Hey, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the conference. My name is Carl Com. I'm a product manager here at Puppet, working on Puppet Connect, and I want to talk to you about it today. So I talk to a lot of customers, and I hear often about the challenges and adopting automation and making that automation more accessible to others in the organization. And a few things are very, very clear to me. One, it needs to be really, really simple to get started with automation, to automate the day-to-day -day things you do on a regular basis, whether that is in the data center or in a cloud environment, whether it's on a mainframe, a virtual machine, or against a remote API. The other thing that I hear often about is the challenges in sharing that automation with others in the organization. It needs to be very, very simple for someone to be able to codify their expertise and make that expertise available to others in the organization in a self-service way. Those challenges are exactly why we built Puppet Connect and I wanna show it to you now. Okay, so I'm going to show you some designs of what we've been working on and we'll be delivering early next year. So let's say that I am on the site reliability team and we're experiencing some instability in one of our applications. Now I know from past experience that clearing and repopulating the cache for this application will resolve the issue that we're seeing. Puppet Connect is where I go to do that type of work. In Puppet Connect, I can see all of the projects that are available to me. Projects are all of the tasks and plans and other automation that I need to do my day-to-day -day work in a self-service way. Projects are bundles of automation that can be written by my team or can be written by other teams in my organization and shared with my teams so that I benefit from their ex expertise. Let's take a minute and talk a little bit about what Bolt is and what tasks and plans and projects are. Bolt is our orchestration solution for automating all of your day-to-day -day tasks against any kind of infrastructure you have, whether that's in the data center, a cloud, or a remote service uh, API. Bolt orchestration is made up of Bolt tasks and plans. A task is a parameterized version of an existing Bash script or PowerShell script or Python script or Ruby script or any script that you have. By parameterizing it and turning it into a Bolt task, you now have something that is repeatable and can be targeted against any infrastructure that you have, whether that's over SSH or WinRM or any APIs. A Bolt plan is a series of tasks that are chained together to perform the right series of steps against the right infrastructure at the right time. Projects are tasks and plans that are bundled together. That bundle contains all of the automation and all of its dependencies that it needs to do its work that can be then shared with my team or can be shared with another team. And they can all benefit from that bundle of automation to do their day-to-day -day job. Now, in this case, the RG Bank team, the team responsible for the application we're seeing the issue in, shared a project containing a set of standardized automations for their application that my team can execute. And if I go into this RG Bank project, I can see all of the tasks and plans that are available to me. This one in particular, the clear cache one, that is what I'm going to use to clear and repopulate the cache. What's great about this is I don't actually have to know how this works. I just know that I run this automation and it works. It does the thing that it needs to do. Here, I can see all of the parameters that have been exposed to me as the operator of this plan such as the dry run, whether or not we want it to actually do the thing we want it to do, or um, what instance of the application we're gonna target against. Now for this particular one, I know that this issue is in production and I want to go ahead and resolve this issue now so we're not gonna do a dry run. We're gonna leave this as it is. If I run the plan, when it is finished, I can see all of the series of steps that have been taken as part of this plan and exactly what infrastructure was targeted as part of doing its work. I can see all of the successes, and if there were any failures, I can go back and review those. 
Further, others can now go and see exactly what has happened against these targets and understand what has been done in the past. So this is great because now I can get my work done as quickly as possible in the correct way by benefiting from other expertise in my company. So everybody can move faster, but with safety. We hope you're as excited about this as we are, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Thank you. Back to you, Abby. Thank you, Carl. That was a fantastic sneak peek into Puppet Connect and just a few of the ways Puppet is helping companies scale across automation capabilities across their organization. To learn more, visit our website and you can get notified when Puppet Connect becomes available. Next, I wanna talk about compliance and agility. How can we truly reconcile what is often perceived as a contradiction in terms? Compliance is hard. In fact, it is often this complexity that slows down your move to the cloud. Compliance starts off complicated. In the CIS standard alone, there are hundreds of PDF pages with over 100 rules per benchmark. On top of that, you have vulnerabilities that require remediation and patching. During 2019, there were an average of 1,000 CVEs a month. But as important as compliance and security are to your business, we all know that's not your actual business. So you're layering compliance and security complexities on top of the complexities of running your business, which now include a multitude of tech stacks across a different business units and geographies that you serve with different locations and operating models from on-prem to colo and private cloud to cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid environments. And just to keep things really interesting, there's this problem of drift. DevOps best practices mean more and more people need to touch infrastructure. And Tiro was just talking about empowering even more people to change with self-service. What I hear from our customers is less a concern about being compliant, because for the most part, they scramble to get it done because failure is frankly not an option. The bigger problem though, is the labor cost and opportunity cost, and ultimately the delays in time to market. One of the ways we help customers manage this complexity is through vulnerability remediation. Puppet Remediate directly integrates with your security scanners, providing you results that you can prioritize and target vulnerabilities faster and more efficiently. And Remediate includes both discovery capabilities and Bolt task automation engine. So you can use it as a standalone product or alongside Puppet Enterprise for even more powerful automation capabilities, allowing you to execute remediation tasks through the Puppet agents you already have installed in your environment. Next, I want to talk about a product we just announced last month, Puppet Comply. Puppet Comply comes out in December, and it helps companies go from a reactive compliance stance into automating continuous compliance. Puppet Comply is a system of compliance intelligence. It's built on top of Puppet Enterprise a system of action that uses model-based automation to continuously enforce that desired state. Giving infrastructure and operation teams the ability to take proactive control of their compliance with their own CIS scanning and assessment capabilities, and all of our favorite, that reporting for audit preparation. We started our compliance automation journey with CIS because it is foundational to so many regulatory frameworks from PCI and HIPAA to GDPR and FISMA. Gartner has said that integrating compliance as code into DevOps tool change helps regulated companies bring that application functionality to market at least 20% faster. And because Puppet Comply can scan workloads across hybrid environments and Puppet Enterprise can enforce desired state across hybrid environments, it also helps you accelerate your cloud migration. Now, I'd love to welcome Simone Van Cleve, who's gonna come and show you a little demo of Puppet Comply. Thanks, Abby. 
Hi everyone, I'm Simone Van Cleve. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Puppet Comply, and I'm excited to give you a look at what we've been working on. Puppet Comply expands on the compliance capabilities of Puppet Enterprise, making compliance more actionable for IT operations teams. Let's jump into Puppet Comply and take a look at how it works. Comply connects to your Puppet Enterprise environment and displays all Puppet managed nodes in your infrastructure, whether they live on-prem or in the cloud. Before running your first scan, you'll define desired compliance for each node by specifying the CIS benchmark and profile that it should conform to. You can let Comply take care of this step for you and automatically assign profiles based on classification data from Puppet Enterprise. So we'll go ahead and do that. Great. Now we're ready to run our scan. So to run a scan, you can select a specific benchmark to scan against, or you can just choose desired compliance to scan each node against the profiles that we assigned in the previous step. You can see here that our PE instance is connected. Comply will then display a list of the nodes to be scanned. If you only want to scan a subset of nodes, you can just deselect any that you don't want to include. We'll go ahead and leave all of them checked for now. And now we can initiate our scan. You'll see the status and results of each scan in the activity feed, including the number of nodes scanned and how many passed or failed the defined benchmarks. Scans are run locally via the Puppet agent, so results are available within a matter of minutes rather than the hours it can take some other scanners. The dashboard is also updated after each scan, and this is where you'll see overall compliance status across your infrastructure as compared to the desired level of compliance that you've defined. You'll notice we're only at 30 or 42% compliant, and that's because this is the first time we run a scan on these nodes. So we haven't implemented fixes yet for any of our failures. You can drill down to see compliance status for individual nodes and detail on which rules within the benchmark passed or failed. Let's take a closer look at one of the rules that failed on this node. Each CIS benchmark contains multiple rules that define specific elements of system configuration. So here we can see the rule description, the rationale, and instructions for how to fix a failure. As part of the comply solution, a Puppet expert will help you translate these fixes into Puppet code and ensure that they are continually enforced with Puppet Enterprise. So now you've seen how ops teams can use Puppet Comply to assess compliance status, easily identify failures, and get actionable guidance for remediation. We hope you'll check it out and let us know what you think. Back over to you, Abby. Thanks, Simone. That was a fantastic short look at Puppet Comply. And if you want to learn more, you should definitely check out the Puppet Comply session to get a closer look. Another challenge many of you are trying to solve today is how to accelerate your cloud journey. I know it is something near and dear to my heart as well. I am so thrilled today to share the virtual stage with our one and only Deepak, who is going to join me to talk more about how we help our customers accelerate their cloud adoption. <laughs> Take it away, Deepak. Thank you very much, Abby. Uh, this is weird, but kind of great because I've often fantasized about being a television personality. And this is a little more literal than I had envisioned, but I'm going to roll with it. So thank you very much. Hi, I'm Deepak, and I'm here to talk to you about the cloud. So I think this is my 10th, maybe 11th Puppet conference, but let's just agree it's been a lot. But this is the first time I've had to do this entirely remotely. It's a bummer that I can't see all your faces or chat with you all in the hallway between sessions, but just think about it like you've replaced the LAN version of me with the WAN version of me. And in a way, what could be more cloudy than that, right? So speaking of the cloud, where do you even start? Well, I think the place to begin is with what I feel is the least controversial way to look at the cloud, which is that the cloud is big. Okay, so... The cloud is big, and like most big things, like the sun or capitalism or Tiger King, it makes you pause and contemplate where you sit in relation to it. So let's get contemplative. So there's the on-prem world, and that's not going away anytime soon. There's the cloud, and that's not going away anytime soon. But notice that they overlap and they intersect. They overlap in time, in space, in tech, in people, in use cases. The lines are blurry. And I think that's the hybrid world. Stuff really isn't that cut and dry anymore. So let's go through some examples. Let's say you're working primarily with physical servers in a data center somewhere, but a core part of how you get your operations work done is with GitHub and Slack, both cloud services. Blurry, right? 
or let's say that you have a pure Kubernetes application, cloud native from toe to tip, but you run that cluster on your own hardware. Also pretty blurry. Well, what about products that deliberately blur the line? Like is AWS Outpost still the cloud? Is Google Anthos still the cloud? If you run a script to manage your stuff, is that the cloud? Or does it become magically the cloud if you turn that into a Lambda? In a world where all these shades of gray are exist, is the moniker of cloud native anything more than an attempt to gatekeep technology and otherwise create arbitrary divides between us as knowledge workers only to get cynically exploited by technology megacorps? Is skepticism about radically new technology a sign of being old and calcified in your thinking or a sign of one's evolving wisdom about trade-offs and nuance? When the answer to most tech questions is it depends, is it even possible to give a conference keynote? <laughs> So when it comes down to it, I think this blurry hybrid world encourages us to re-examine what it means to actually automate stuff. And I think you can analyze this in a couple of different ways. First, there's the what. You've heard me say this before, but there's way more technology choice across more layers of the stack than ever. And this gives you way more choice among a larger variety of things. For every possible problem, there's a ton of different point solutions some of, them, some of them, I hope, even work. And as more and more of the stack becomes software-defined and software-controllable, it's no surprise to see software libraries and tools that solve very specific problems for very specific parts of the stack. And that's really great. But on the flip side, it gives you a lot more things to argue about with anonymous people over on the internet. So, you know, there's that. So next you have the who. More teams are now called upon or maybe more aptly deputized to help manage things. You have originally, it was primarily the purview of the operations team, but increasingly you're now starting to see that expand to encompass ops teams, app dev teams, dev services teams, sec ops, special compliance teams, and the list goes on and on as people get more and more creative with their organizational structures. The point I'm trying to get across here is that operations in 2020 is a really big tent and it's only getting bigger. Even in a pandemic when you would expect things to really contract in terms of IT deployment headcount, like headcount is actually going up and people are moving to the cloud quicker than ever. So the struggle is real. Next you have the how. We all know that you have to be this automated to ride the ride in order to really take advantage of the cloud and capitalize upon its many benefits, but there's a bunch of different ways to accomplish this. And the ways in which you have to automate things vary tremendously across vendors, tools, APIs, architectures, use cases, and the list goes on and on. Using the best tool for the job has never been more vital. And I interpret that as meaning from an operations and automation standpoint, you need to be able to automate things in the widest possible variety of ways in order to be able to get your job done. That's why historically Puppet has always cared about model-driven automation and how we've expanded into task-driven automation and how in the future we're planning on delivering you products that let you express more orchestrated workflows as well as having things driven by events. Having this variety is really important if you wanna be able to address all the different kinds of problems you're gonna run into when dealing with all these different kinds of things and stuff in the hybrid world. So lastly, what's the point? And that's when we get to the why. And I think the reason why we do all this stuff honestly hasn't really changed a whole, a whole, much, a whole bunch uh, as time goes on. We still wanna move faster. We still want better quality of service for your users. We still want flexibility in the face of problems. We wanna control cost and we wanna control complexity. We all wanna do that in a way that is immensely compliant and safe and secure. So it's all the same stuff that we've been trying to do all along. It's just adapted and extended to work across everything we have, new and old. We still want our infrastructure to be clean and tidy, flexible, compliant, and easy to manage. Are we asking for too much? Well, if you consider that you get these same properties from the shampoo I use every morning, then no, I don't think we're asking for too much. So how does this all play out in practice? Well, I think what this means is that solving problems in this hybrid world is now a little bit trickier and requires that you think a little more full spectrum. Solving any individual problem might require that you end up touching way more pieces across different levels of the stack than ever before. For example, Infrastructure issues now frequently touch the network, especially if you're dealing with the software-defined networking that exists in container platforms or cloud platforms. 
Security issues now increasingly involve ticketing systems and collaboration just as much as they involve patching and orchestration, and responding to incidents can involve touching a bunch of different APIs and services. So with all that said, what do we think automation can look like if you think beyond the underlying plumbing? Well, that's what we set out to explore when we built Relay. And Relay is our take on what a big tent, full spectrum automation product would look like that's intended to solve problems beyond that low level of plumbing. So let me show you what I mean. Relay is a workflow automation platform that pulls together all the tools and technologies you all need to effectively manage cloud and hybrid environments. It works by listening to events from the tools, cloud providers, and apps that you already use, and then triggers workflows to orchestrate actions that you want to take in response. You could use Relay for a bunch of different use cases in cloud and hybrid environments, such as being able to optimize cost in AWS, Azure, or GCP, or things like making sure you have secure configurations for cloud resources, like protecting access to S3 buckets, removing, uh, removing lingering compute nodes, or cleaning up volumes of sensitive data on them. It could even automate parts of your incident response processes. We launched partnerships recently with Datadog, PagerDuty, and VictorOps within the past three months to help automate processes for our huge combined sets of users. And in addition to those partnerships, Relay integrates with dozens of cloud providers, tools, and APIs that your team probably already uses alongside an open source ecosystem of steps and triggers that can be composed into more sophisticated workflows. So one of the logos on this screen looks pretty familiar, and it's Puppet. So here you can see the different things we can currently do with Puppet, and we'll be adding a lot more over time. So let's see how it actually works in practice. In this demo, I've set up a Relay workflow to trigger every time a new Puppet run happens. Out of all the things Relay can do, we thought that would be the fitting demo for Puppetize, right? So if we detect a specific compliance rule violation, which in this case is Sudoers, CIS standard rule 4115, then we'll output some diagnostic info, notify some people in Slack, await approval, and then terminate the system, which is a common thing to do in a high sensitivity environments where you can't risk the exposure. But that's not all we can do. What if we also wanted to create an ops or a security ticket about this? After all, it's Probably pretty fishy and weird that someone is messing around with sudo on a production system, right? So let's say the security team uses Jira for ticketing. You can just search for Jira in the step library, hit add, and there you go. Steps are just containers, so you can write a step in any language to do just about anything that you want. Now, notice that Relay shows you some code when you add this step. And that's because every Relay workflow is under the hood represented as code. We don't need to tell you why infrastructure as code is a good idea, right? Like I'm hopefully preaching to the choir here. So again, look at all the things that I'm not doing. I'm not pouring over the Jira and Slack API documents or their, their individual SDKs. I'm not figuring out how to code up a human in the loop approval gate for my script. I'm not thinking about how to make my script parallel so it runs faster. In fact, I don't really have to do any programming at all. Step parameters can be changed pretty quickly and easily directly in the interface. So now that the step is added, you can see the change reflected in the execution graph. And as you know, at Puppet, we love graphs. So this one uh, gives you instant feedback on what you've just authored. So you can easily tell upon visual inspection that your step has been added in the right spot. So that's pretty nice. So now we just have to connect our Puppet installation to Relay. It's not hard to do on your own, but we went ahead and made a module for you. It's available now on the Forge. So now if we switch to a terminal on one of the nodes in question. Okay, so if you have this module installed, you can kick off an agent run, and then that agent run should trigger the workflow inside of Relay. So once the agent run is done, we should see a new run queue up. There we go. So now we can watch it run in real time and notice how the steps are executing in parallel, which is nice. It's handy um, to save time. And as certain steps complete, we can check out their output. 
But note, you don't have to wait until the step is done to see the output. The logs are all live streamed, but this step is done. So here we can see the node's facts, which is nice forensic information. And there's no need to click through to five other tools in order to get the data that I need. But the info I think we're really interested in is the stuff around our pseudoers check. So let's check it out. So we see that someone did indeed modify that file. It's a legit problem. So let's go back to the graph and approve termination of that node. Nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. So um, just it's worth mentioning, you don't have to have this manual approval gate in here and it's easy to take that step out or otherwise make the process automatic based on some other data or even a custom step of your own choosing. It's really up to you. And the workflow is done, which of course is cause for celebration. Uh, the confetti is configurable for all of you out there that hate fun. <laughs> so, now we can flip to the Azure console where we've got the details for that particular compute instance. And we can now see that the system has been deallocated. So there you have it, workflow complete. Compliance problem is hopefully taken care of for now and we have tickets to help us investigate exactly what the root cause was. No us, no fuss. And that's the demo. Okay, so that's a bit of a whirlwind tour of Relay, and there's a lot more coming soon. There's plenty more to show off, so the first thing I invite all of you to do is try it out. You can sign up at relay.sh and start playing around. You can talk to us through the app itself or on the Puppet community Slack in the Relay channel. So tell us what you like and give us your feature requests and let us know what kind of workflows you're interested in automating. We'd be happy to help you build it. And while I'm at it, a huge thanks to all of you who have already been using the public beta, automating all kinds of stuff and giving us feedback. Thank you so much, it really helps. We'll be generally available in March, 2021. So if we don't see you in the app now, hopefully we will see you soon. And lastly, if you wanna know more, check out Kanez's session, Building the Future of Hybrid Cloud Automation. There'll be more demos, more information about how Relay works, and hopefully better jokes than me. So that's all I have. Thank you very much for letting me virtually join you all. And with that, I will hand it back to Abby. Thanks, Deepak. That was amazing. As you can see, our investments in automation for cloud native technologies is only just getting started. Today, I also wanted to talk a bit about all the fantastic work that we've been doing behind the scenes as we expand Puppet Enterprise into a platform. Over the past year, Puppet has been quietly investing in shifting our tech stacks, giving our customers more agility and flexibility with our products, but also to be frank, to give ourselves that agility as well. To that end, we have shifted to a modern and modular platform. Built on top of Kubernetes, we are taking all of the fantastic capabilities we have today and moving them to a microservices-based architecture. Each of these microservices and the platform itself are all connected by APIs, allowing us to grow, scale, and ultimately innovate on the platform and grow our capabilities easily and quickly. In fact, continuous delivery for Puppet Enterprise 4.0, which was released in August of this year, was our first product to be deployed on this new platform. So, Look for more good things to come from innovation next year. As I wrap up today, I wanted to leave you with how we're pulling all of these things together. We are providing automation solutions built on top of an innovative platform, helping to deliver intelligent self-service capabilities across all of your teams at scale, and all while giving you choice in that automation preference. Task-driven, model-driven, or event-driven. All of this is infrastructure agnostic, on-prem, in a public cloud, or all the above, that choice is up to you. I would like to thank you all for being with us today virtually. First, I'd like to give a shout out to all of our sponsors. Thank you so much for allowing us to hold this event. Next, I'd like to invite you to virtually head over to some of our great sessions we've got. As the head of product, I'll admit I'm a bit biased, but these are a few of our great product sessions that you definitely don't wanna miss.